Two years ago, I put out a video that leaked early IPC projections for both Zen 5 and Zen 6. And since then, of course, well, Zen 5 is out, and we know that that information about Zen 5 was absolutely accurate. Although I have to say, two years later, I recently realized that I really haven't updated you all on how the Zen 6 projections are still looking, despite putting out tons of Zen 6 videos. In fact, I've, I've noticed that I've actually talked about Zen 7 IPC projections more in 2025 than Zen 6. And so today I want to fix that. And I also want to leak some important pricing information I've heard about AMD graphics cards that, well, you're definitely going to want to stick around for that will be in the later part of this video. But first, let's get to Zen 6 IPC. But actually, before I show that quote, please stick around for the context I'm going to provide after it, because context really matters with this one. But anyways, let's get to it. One of my best AMD sources told me that based on their recent testing, they expect Final Silicon to have 6 to 8% higher floating point IPC versus Zen 5. Note that this is not the final claimed IPC that will take into account gaming and other performance per clock uplifts. Oh, and this person told me they can confirm 96 megabytes of cache is on every layer of vCache for Zen 6, and that my prior leaks stating that Zen 6 can stack multiple layers is correct. It's not new, but this being corroborated is huge in my opinion because, well, well, I can't promise you that this will come into a consumer product. It is up to AMD if they give consumers or if it even makes sense after testing to give consumers extra layers of vCache. But if they do, when you combine 296 megabyte layers and then 48 megabytes of L3 cache in the die, they could make a 12 core 240 megabyte Zen 6 gaming chip, and that is exciting. Which, yeah, I don't have much more to say about that part of the quote. No, what I do have a lot to say about is that 6 to 8% number. Listen closely. I did not just confirm that Zen 6 only has a 6 to 8% IPC uplift. I simply confirmed that in floating point performance per clock, Zen 6 is uplift in that department is likely similar or very slightly lower than what Zen 4 accomplished. You see, you have to remember, actually back before Zen 4's launch, I did a rather long video that set the record straight on performance expectations, which is to say, I confirmed that one of my sources said that in FP, the uplift for Zen 4 over Zen 3 was 8%, but AMD eventually claimed 14%. Yeah, see, there are two different things. You know, IPC is not the same thing as floating point performance uplift. For example, with Zen 3, if you remember, AMD claimed a 19% IPC uplift, and in hardware and box testing, clock for clock, Zen 3 was actually above a 20% uplift. And so these things can fluctuate, but I think it will very comfortably be at or above 10%. I think we can lock in 10%. If they got 14 from eight, if this is then, you know, close to, I don't know, 7% or something, it's going to be above 10% once you take into account gaming. And actually, unlike Zen 5, Zen 6 has a lot of things going for it that are more disproportionately benefiting gaming. Like they have a new layout with bridge dies that would help with lower latency, that would help gaming. They're gonna utilize a new IO die that will focus on lower latency and higher DDR5 clocks, that would help gaming performance. And also they'll have a unified 12 core CCD, which would disproportionately help a lot of very recent game releases that use more than eight threads. They could pull from 12 full cores instead of going from eight cores for the first eight threads and then pulling from, you know, hyper threading for the rest of them. Zen 6 looks like it's kind of purpose built for gaming, frankly. And so I expect that it's plausible, I'm not confirming it, but it's very plausible that a lot of gamer focused IPC tests on websites could maybe even beat the claimed IPC uplift that AMD will say. But again, I don't know for sure. But what I do know is that before I recorded this, I had another source get back to me at AMD that said this about the performance. This person a different in a different department at AMD from the first source said that in their testing, they're getting 13 to 16% higher performance over Zen 5 at the same clocks and server workloads. But this person also stressed that this isn't comprehensive. This isn't the average IPC, but it is, again, above 10%. Also, this person said that the clock speeds are very impressive, even at target voltages, so not overclocked or being pushed to the limit. Some of their Zen 6C samples, not even Zen 6, Zen 6C, 
are boosting to nearly 4.5 gigahertz and in lighter multi-threaded workloads where they load up all 32 cores but not maybe push it as hard as blender so not blender but you know still using all 32 threads that they're seeing all cores on these zen 6 ccds hit around 4 gigahertz guys that's much higher than what final zen 5c silicon is capable of even now when you look at the max boost clocks are lower than what this is getting in all core clocks and so there you go not going to double down on ipc and clocks exactly yet but this is all looking very exciting for gaming and uh all right now it's time to move on to another subject gpu shopping advice that is actually informed by people in retail and distribution who are warning me of possibly huge supply issues later this year you're not gonna want to miss it but first an ad from a sponsor this piece of content is brought to you by the Ugreen Nexode 165 watt retractable power bank. This awesome power bank can deliver up to 100 watts via a single USB-C port or 165 watts via two USB-C ports at the same time. And it can actually charge three devices at once with its third port added on to these, a USB-A port. And with 100 watts of peak output from a single port and a huge 20,000 mAh capacity battery, you can charge a 14-inch MacBook Pro from 0 to 54% in just 30 minutes and fully charge an iPhone 16 up to 3.8 times. And you can monitor those charge-ups, by the way, with its slick TFT display that allows you to track remaining battery, input and output power, voltage, current, and power flow curves. Oh, and that charging is super easy to initiate because it has an included retractable 0.65 meter USB-C cable that can stretch and hold different lengths below 0.65 meters. So it keeps it very tidy. And, you know, if you're on a vacation and you pull this thing out, maybe at an airport, you don't have to go, okay, so where's the USB-C cable? Untangle it. It's just in there. You pull it out and charge your device. And it's also very durable as well. It has over 25,000 retraction cycles and 10,000 plus bend tests that are conducted on this when it was being developed to ensure that it is a durable uh, piece of kit that will last a very long time and so look if you are interested in this or any other ugreen product check out ugreen prime day deals in the description for up to 40 percent off doing so just even clicking on that link supports the channel and it also allows you to get the best deals that you can possibly get on ugreen's awesome products to so support moore's law is dead by checking out the ugreen 165 watt nexo retractable power bank today all right, so if you haven't noticed, recently RX 9070 XT pricing and RDNA 4 pricing on the whole is dropping and not just dropping in the united states but also for example if you check in the united kingdom you can see that once you account for currency conversions and vat differences that there you can get cards for around only 15 percent above msrp and in fact if you're willing to buy what i believe is their equivalent of an open box product you can get a 9070 xd at msrp and the short-term reasons for this are not a mystery right there is a summer lull going on prices tend to go this low i remember people freaking out about 800 dollars 7900 xtx is a year or so ago and it's because this is the slower part of the season but here's the thing though i reached out because i thought this would be an interesting story you know prices going down buy your graphics cards now and all of the retail and distribution sources I talked to basically said the same thing. I'm not going to put any quotes on screen here, but that's because I don't think it's necessary. So let me break it down into four bullet points. The first one is that, yes, the 9070 XT is continuing to sell well, but also, point two, the 5070 Ti is selling okay now that it is largely in stock it depends on the person i talked to some retailers said the 9070 xt is still pretty consistently outselling it other people said that it's neck and neck in sales which remember even if amd is neck and neck in sales that's still a big accomplishment for radeon because that would mean 50 percent market share if that continued forever and they are nowhere near 50 percent total market share right now uh, the third thing also is that because sales are a bit lower although things are still moving availability is very solid and here's the thing though everyone told me they expect prices to stay where they are about now or decrease a little more over the next few weeks but then by the fall everyone expects prices to shoot back up and not just for the obvious reasons like for example an obvious seasonal 
reason that prices tend to go up a bit after summer is back to school shopping that then rolls into the holiday season where people are willing to spend more to get the perfect gift for a loved one. Yeah, that's going to happen. Those things are one of the three reasons the people I talked to this week expect prices to go up in the fall. But there's two others. The second reason is there's going to be a lot of forced demand, I am told, for basically all PC components, not as much the GPUs, but all of them in general, for businesses being forced to upgrade to Windows 11. Finally, there's been a lot of warnings out there, people talking to a lot of my distribution sources, you know, at major businesses saying, hey, we are going to have to buy a bunch of stuff, make sure you have that ready. So that's going to cause a spike in prices to a degree, in addition to, of course, back to school and holiday seasonality. But then there's a third reason here that I think is quite worrisome. And again, this wasn't going to be part of this video, but I heard it from multiple people comprehensively, and I thought, well, you all need to be warned, is that the in quarter three, the pre-tariff stockpiles are expected to run dry. Seriously, I have multiple retailers warning me that even if we were served some more tacos in the United States later this year, that either way, there will be some supply shocks, especially in the tech world, and especially during the holiday season. And now I want to explain why all of the people I talked to this week are sure that's going to happen to some degree. Even if we do get served a bunch of tacos this fall and, you know, the tariffs are lifted in the United States, like even if it's a total zero for zero deal where there's no tariffs between Europe and the U.S. and there's a China deal and it all works out great. Boat shipping takes like, you know, two to three four, maybe even sometimes six months, depending on how you're doing it and if anything goes wrong. And so that means that even if all tariffs are lifted in the United States, like a month from now, there's a bunch of stuff that should be on boats for the holiday season that either aren't on boats or had to incur extra costs to get to the U.S. And that will maybe be worse in the U.S. than, in, for example, in Europe, but that will cause ripple effects that raise some prices probably in most regions of the world. And again, that's if there is a lifting of tariffs. If there isn't, then yeah, look, expect everything to get 10 to 30% more expensive. Frankly, the Xbox is already proof of what happens when you institute tariffs. Unlike Sony, who took Trump's threats seriously and therefore prepared for tariffs to hit, stockpiling PlayStations in the United States to keep prices stable, for some reason, Microsoft didn't do really anything. And then, because of that, they have recently been forced to jack up prices a lot. And there you go. There's your case study. One company stockpiled and was ready for the tariffs. One company wasn't. The company that wasn't was forced to raise prices by quite a bit. And that is proof of what's going to happen to a lot of tech products this fall to some degree, no matter what. And that is because cheap shipping boats, like I said, take two to six months. And so even if we get some tacos late summer, that's going to then be like six months before the prices have stabilized after a Windows 11 upgrade cycle for businesses, after back to school, after a Christmas shopping season. I really do think this holiday season, therefore, prices could go up quite a bit. And this is informed, like I said, by Everyone I spoke to in retail and distribution this week. So, look, you have been warned. And I, I will say this. Don't buy something if you don't need it. Uh, only get it if you really, really want it. I always recommend that. But if you've been holding out, I've been told by multiple people that I trust for, you know, the supply, pricing, and stock leaks that have been pretty accurate over the past few years that... It's probably going to be at their cheapest point that is tech products will probably through July. And then after that, nobody should be surprised if it's a very expensive holiday shopping season. You have been warned. All right. Well, that is going to do it for this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please comment down below. I mean, I'm curious which you're thinking you should get before prices could spike or if you're looking to shop at all maybe you just don't even care also what do you think about zen 6 it is really shaping up to be a killer gaming product i believe for next year but in addition to that make sure you like the video share the video double check that you're subscribed to the moore's lies Dead youtube channel you know uh, 
typically in any given month half of you are not it really does help engagement in the algorithm if you subscribe to the moore's laws dead youtube channel and ring that bell button and then in addition to that Consider joining the Moore's Law is Dead Patreon. Even at the lowest tier, you'll get access to a catalog of hundreds of episodes of Die Shrink. Multiple just came out. Uh, they come out every month. You'll also get access to asking guest questions. Colin Moriarty of Sacred Symbols will be the next guest. There is a ton of gaming economics and console and gaming hardware news to discuss with him. You'll be able to ask him questions. I'll put out the reader mails for those very soon. And then, of course, you can also ask free questions at the proper tier for the live streams. Another one should be coming out at the end of this week. You'll be able to ask free questions there if you join the right tier. There's early ad free Broken Silicon, access to a Discord that I do believe has been curated to be one of the most respectful and uh, most intelligent discussion-wise Discord I've been in, maybe ever. I, don't, I really do brag, actually, that the Moore's Laws of Discord is very good. There are thousands of industry experts there who would love to discuss this new video with you. And I will be one of those people in the Discord who can discuss it with you as well. But for everyone else, I guess I'll say this though, right? If you made it this far to the end of the video, at a minimum, thank you for watching. <laughs>